Hello my darklings and welcome back to my channel. Today's rock is going to be a bicolored Agapostmon sweat bee. Now that's a bit of a handful of a name. Their common name is just striped sweat bee. So let me start off by pointing out that despite that name probably sounding very unappealing to most people, this bee is absolutely freaking adorable. And I fell in love with it when I first saw them in my pollinator garden last spring. So these guys are a super, super tiny little bee. They only get to be about seven to 14 millimeters long. And here's the fun part about that. That's on the large side. The Acapostmon genus belongs to a family of bees called Helictidae. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah, don't quote me on it. But it's the family of basically all smaller bees. So sweat bees, flea bees, there's a couple of other size bees in there, but basically all the tiny, tiny bees. And this guy's one of the biggest members in that family. Now, granted, that's, that's still pretty small, but oh my gosh, these guys are so cute. I first found them sleeping. The bees were sleeping in the primrose flowers. You don't get much cuter than that, people. But anyway, I digress. So this is a bee that actually has quite a wide range. It's um, over, it spans across most of North America. But on this, in, in this state, in Washington, it's actually one of like 600 different types of bees. I did not know we had that many bees. You know, growing up here, I only recall ever seeing, you know, a couple of different types of bees. And there was honeybees, there was bumblebees, and then everything else was a wasp. So my eyes and mind have been, have been widening their search. But this little guy, I noticed him at the beginning of last spring. Like I said, he was sleeping in the primrose. And they are super, super pretty. They have a bright metallic green thorax and head. And then the abdomen is this brilliant yellow and black stripe. Now, the reason they look like that is because it actually alerts potential predators that it is still, in fact, a bee and actually acts as a deterrent. But more interestingly is actually where they get the name Sweat Bee. Now, I tell that to most people and they're just like, ew, Sweat Bee, what's in this? And when I tell you the reason why, you probably won't be any less grossed out, but I'm absolutely fascinated by this. So Sweat Bees are so named because they have a tendency to actually land on people. Now they're not aggressive, it's a very mild-mannered bee, but it lands on people because it wants to collect the perspiration. It literally comes and, and laps up the sweat. And the reason why is because when we excrete sweat, there's a lot of salt and minerals in that. And they're actually getting nutrients from that. So, like I said, you know, people tend to be really grossed out by that, but I think that's pretty cool. But... What I actually found was a lot more interesting about these guys is sort of their social dynamic between each other. So you can't really tell them apart at a glance, but the males have those nice bright yellow and black striped abdomens, whereas the females have kind of a softer, paler stripe, like a white stripe abdomen. But um, these guys, when they nest they burrow into the ground. They're technically a solitary bee. So they burrow into the ground and each egg, almost like a mason bee, has its own little chamber where they will actually place in one egg and one pollen ball. They'll harvest pollen a lot like honeybees do. They have the little baskets on their legs and they harvest pollen and nectar that way and it creates a little ball that they then leave for the egg for when it hatches and then they seal it up and they dig another chamber for a different egg so each egg has its own little underground chamber and in that chamber they have enough food to last through their larval stage so when they hatch they eat they grow they pupate and then 
over winter is when they pupate and then they will actually emerge as adults the following spring. Here's where it gets interesting. The females have a tendency to actually sort of inherit the natal nest, so the nest that they were born from. The females will take it over and the males aren't allowed to come back in. They kick them out. So the males will go and actually form little groups to sleep in for protection and they'll sleep in the flowers which just blows my mind i don't know why but one of the cutest things on god's green earth is watching a bee sleep in a flower you couldn't get any cuter if it was a mouse sleeping in a flower that's hard to beat but the females on the other hand will take over the nest or form their own burrow if they find some place with more food or better food. And while the men, the males, will kind of form little clusters to sleep in, the females will actually form sort of communities to nest in. So they don't make a colony, they make more so something like a um, an apartment complex, in a, in a sense, where they live in a singular area but each one sort of takes care of their own except when they go to forage so when the females go out to find food and to pollinate there will always be one or two females left behind at the entrance of the dens to protect from predators so when sweat bees feed they can't just go to any old flower because of their small size, they also have small mouth parts and they can't get to the nectar in some of the more deep necked flowers like trumpet flowers, uh, crocosmia, those kinds of things. They actually prefer flowers that more like cone flowers or asters. Like I said, in my yard when I found them, they really like the primrose because it's a large open flower and they could crawl all over the stoma and get to the nectar without any hassle. They also prefer flowers with tiny little florets like sunflowers. A floret is kind of like a almost a miniature flower. So, but things like sunflowers, they actually have on each individual sunflower seeds that forms that center. Each one of those seeds has its own little floret. And so the sweat bees love that. They've been all over my sunflowers this year. So this is how, this is how he turned out, my little sweat bee. Guys, let me know if there is anything you would like to see me paint. If you'd like to see more of these videos and you have any suggestions, please comment below and let me know. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Goodbye.